Hi everyone, it's Ken LaRouf and I'm with Will Harris, product manager of the Flame family. And we're gonna talk about update two and 2018 in general. Yep. So Will, what is the guiding vision that you have for the development of Flame? Wow, I would say it is uh, to make Flame the story hub in uh, our customers' workflows, uh, but also provide enough creative tools to make it worth you know, being that story hub. We, we see people get the most value out of Flame when it's kind of the middle of their workflow, where they're doing a lot of the creative iterations, and then bringing on other people's work in as well to make a finished product. What have you done with 2018? Well, specifically in the 2018 release, uh, back in February this year, we had some cool improvements to the desktop paint tool, making it able to work in 16-bit float and work with color management. So that was, that was a big step. Okay. Uh, we also um, improved the batch paint tool to give it the ability to people to scale the vectors, to be able to reorder the strokes, change durations, really sort of modernize it in a, in a cool way. Mm -hmm. We then looked at uh, our Connected Conform, a kind of ongoing effort. And, and at that specific release, we did some improvements to the linking and the renaming in the actual uh, Conform tool. So that, that was, I think, useful stuff. And then finally, um, we, 2018 was the release where we were able to start doing 32-bit float processing on some specific nodes in Flame. So in Action, in the Comp node, where you need specifically that super high quality full float, that's now possible. Mm. So what have you done for the subscribers of Flame 2018? Well, 2018 is really the first release of Flame that moved from the extensions format to a major release and updates. So we had our 2018 early this year in February, and then by the time NAB was here in April, there was an update one already out. And really what that was was like an overgrown service pack with a few small features, like the markers view. And then July this year, only like three, three and a half months later, we had our update two, which is actually um, kind of quite a large release in itself with an up, a big update to Connected Conform with the Python API for Flame and the legendary Pybox. Mm. And we intend to keep doing uh, more updates more regularly. That's the update system for subscribers. Okay. So you just mentioned some of update two. Can you go into more detail about what was in update two? Yeah, I think one of the big features of update two was the connected conform update sources and update sequences. It's a way of being able to accommodate having late arriving edits uh, which is certainly that something, <laughs> something that our customers told us happens. Uh, it's a way of doing like a smart merge of editorial changes like shots that get longer, shots that have, you know, worst case scenario, get longer on the head and actually have to start earlier. So this update sources and update sequences allows us to actually blend in a new edit and then extend our sources to accommodate and accommodate those, those changes. Another thing that's in update two is the Python API for Flame. And really where that came from was the idea that our customers want to be able to automate things for sort of starting up shots and, and doing kind of repetitive tasks in their batches. So for example, uh, you want to be able to load the right EXR media to start compositing with, or you want to be able to uh, change all your screens to, to ads. These are, these are kind of macroizable tasks where we can use the Python API to drive Flame like a, a user would. And that was really what it does. It allows you to do things like load footage, append with a setup, modify nodes, and then even populate like a, a write file node to set a path and render back. You can execute a render, you can do a bunch of sort of utility things in the batch environment hmm. via Python. Fantastic. You mentioned Pybox also. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, Pybox uh, is kind of a new tool in the, the family of Matchbox, Lightbox. Pybox is really our way of using Python as a, a kind of a gasket or a way of connecting from the Flame world into a scriptable command line renderer or a utility third-party product yeah. to be able to kind of 
outsource, if you like, certain effects that maybe Flame cannot do uh, to another tool and then feed the output back in into an individual node. It can be used within the batch or the timeline. So an example would be how we, we have a Pi box that works with Foundry Nuke, and it literally feeds a source like from into your batch node, opens a Nuke script, allows you to scrub it, and then the result coming back into the output of that node in Flame is whatever processing was done by that command line renderer that can then be passed down the line and, and you know, used later. It's pretty cool. It sounds very impressive, absolutely. Another cool thing about Pybox is that it's really a generic hosting mechanism for connecting to any kind of scriptable tool that you want. So we think that the community out there that have been so innovative with Matchbox and other tools may be able to start using this to connect to stuff we haven't even thought of yet. So for whatever specific effect or kind of you know, detailed process beyond what they could do like in GLSL and Matchbox, it's kind of a, the world is your oyster. You can connect to your own little app. You could connect to a scriptable app, maybe for a color grading application or another compositing app or something we haven't even thought of yet with Pybox. Fascinating. That's excellent. So in update two, I know there's been some improvements to projection tracking and the workflow. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, so the traditional projectors inside of Action are now able to bake or track their image in place on a piece of moving geometry or a surface that you want to be able to adjust. So this is really useful for things like set extension or warping, distorting, something that's a piece of geometry or even just a surface uh, that wasn't able to be done before. Uh, it's it's a, just a useful way to be able to manipulate things that are projected in 3D space. And we think there might be co more cool things we can do with that in the future. Ah, well with that, we're gonna end this interview about Flame 2018 with Will Harris, product manager of the Flame family. Thank you, Will, for taking the time and answering some of our sure. questions. Thanks.